Hello and welcome to South Africa on 99.94. Um, do remember at the end, if you enjoyed this episode, to uh, rate, review and subscribe. I'm Neil Manthorpe. My co-host is Longani Zama. And we're going to be talking about the SA20. There's still a couple of uh, games to go. Um, some teams have got three, most teams have got three games to go and the fight is on for um, a playoff place. Uh, it's interesting that uh, the top four qualify for semi-finals, four out of six. So um, that team in fourth place will have a neg negative record. Um, and that is something that uh, is under review. Uh, but um, it's only, I think, the Durban Super Giants who are struggling I'm not even sure that uh, I think they can get there technically, but they'd need all sorts of weird results to go their way. Anyway, um, Longani's more on top of uh, those permutations than I am. Um, I'm more interested in the, in the overview, which at this stage, Sams, um, and I'm taking feedback from around the world, uh, just as a product, um, it's been an outstanding success. Uh, it's is it fair to say that it has exceeded even the greatest hopes and expectations so far? Yeah, I think I think it's fair to say that. I think I, I spoke to Graham Smith just before the final game between the Josie Super Kings and Durban Super Giants at Wanderers, um, and, and he said, "Look, in my wildest expectations, I didn't think that the start would be." as incredible as it has been. I'm, I've been blown away by the support all across South Africa um, and, and the consistency of it because you can turn up and, and, and see a thing as a novelty and say, oh, that was a nice one off to go to the Newlands and see it full. But people have kept turning up. You know, I, I live down the road from the Wanderers and it's actually made more sense to take the scenic route, park the car at home and walk to the stadium than try and find traditional parking like you would for the media because it just takes, it takes over an hour. I did it once and I said, I'll never do it again. It takes over an hour to try and get anywhere in the wondrous precinct. And, you know, it, it obviously disrupts end of the day traffic, but it's a problem that South Africa haven't had around cricket for a long time. Um, so these are good problems for cricket to have to wrestle with again, because clearly people are back and people are, or amped to get in and, and, and get a taste of it. It's, it, it, it is. I mean, we're kind of more than halfway through and it's remarkable how people keep turning up 15,000, 17,000 plus. And the vibe in there is, is, is incredible. It's, it's, it, it really is. It's kind of gone viral and, 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 and there's a sense of, you know, everybody wants a piece of it. And, and that's a testament to the cricket on the field. Um, and, and, and just, that the South African sportsman does does want to see top quality cricket. It's about the crowds, but it's not about the revenue from the crowds, is it? Um, the you know the crowds are not there to provide the tournament and cricket South Africa with money. The ticket pricing has been really, really clever, really smart. We mentioned the importance of crowds beforehand. Now. Um, you know, when I've, be, I've been telling uh, the, the English journalists um, during the, the England tour, the ODIs, um, that the, some, some of the tickets, the cheapest tickets, cost a pound each. <laughs> and they were, they were just like, what? You, you know, you, you can't buy... You, a, a pound buys you nothing in the UK, but it's been really cleverly done. Um, the, the average ticket, I think, has been 50 rand, which is like... Two pound fifty, which again they they just you can't buy you cannot buy a bottle of water at an English ground for for two pound fifty, um, and what what's been clever is that they've been sold in batches of six. So if you want a, a twenty round or a fifty round ticket, you've got to buy six of them, um, which I think is really clever because that's appealed to the young, it's appealed to the students. Um, you know they they can they can also hey guys it's only fifty round a ticket so that's six in fact whereas you might have been selling one ticket you're actually selling six so the bundling has been very clever um, and and even the most expensive tickets have been like I, th I think one hundred and fifty or some of them were two hundred rand which is you know, ten pounds um, and again it really cleverly done because 
you, you're not actually handing over 20 rand. 20 rand is, you know, you can't buy, buy very much in South Africa for 20 rand, but you're buying six, so it's 120 rand. And, and but what, what it's done is created that atmosphere. And we mentioned this in theory, didn't we, before? And that, that the idea was to fill the stadiums, create an atmosphere, and that would lift performances. Um, and the theory has worked. That's the actual aspect of it that, has been so attractive and has made the product so attractive and, and watchable. And from that flows all the serious revenue. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, the reality is a pound in South Africa goes a lot further than it does in the UK. That's just the reality. And, the you know, kudos, kudos to the organisers for saying, if we price ourselves out, we, we shoot ourselves in the foot and... We, we 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 lose any chance of, of of filling the stadiums because, like you say, that's not the actual revenue generator, and that's not the energy generator either. You know, it's you can make it a premium product and you'll you'll have a fraction of your potential market, but when you open it up to the masses, I mean, this has still been January, which is traditionally one of the, the tougher economical months, on the back of holidays and getting back to school and you know. That's what's blown me away the most. You know, payday was only just the other day. The tournament was a good couple of weeks in, so people either bought tickets early or just saved enough money to say, I will. And when they saw it, they're like, okay, well, I'm going to spend the last few disposable bits of income that I have on going to the game and being part of it. And when they're there, you know, you buy one beer, you buy two beers, you buy 10 beers, but you, you're part of this carnival. It, it, it's honestly felt like a carnival at every, I've been to three of the, of the stadiums so far. It's been an absolute carnival. And, you know, I, I went on the field after the game when Faf made a hundred and a few of the players had, had sort of gathered for the, for the post match and then signing autographs and taking pictures, walking around the wonders. It honestly felt like an international game, but it, 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 it felt like, you know, a procession, and, and and all of them, Durban players, Josie players, obviously the Josie was slightly happier than the Durban guys, but all of them were just sort of looking around in awe and going, geez, this, uh, some of them, I've never played in this. I've never played in an atmosphere like this because some of them were not international cricketers. And they just said that they, they felt it energizes you so much. I mean, Subra, Prenel and Subrian, who, who, who plays for Durban, said it, it it feels like every single ball is an international delivery because of the pressure and the din of noise and you kind of have to shout to the to the to the wicket keeper you know uh, small things like that which you, you kind of take for granted when you're watching on tv or watching in the stands but for the player to, to suddenly have to factor in the crowd and the noise and the expectation on every single delivery uh it, it lifts your performance and it, it does you know when you look at the ipl and you saw it's created all these millionaires but it's it's created hundreds of in indian youngsters who are international stage ready that there, there's no such thing as pressure or fear of a big crowd and that's that's the one thing that it's going to do for south african cricket it's going to lift the standards and, and 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 make people comfortable playing on a big stage so that's that's the real importance and when you hear it from a player who's sort of on the sidelines saying that i, I feel like i'm playing on an international stage and every ball matters that's 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 really good feedback. Yeah, and um, it's it's the rest of South African domestic cricket that that needs to benefit and to stay alive. And um, I don't understand. I'm not an economist, so I don't understand how the trickle down um, is going to work. Um, but you know, the first class game is struggling. None of the domestic uh, tournaments have sponsors. Um, and and the the domestic game is is fraying at the edges, and the SA twenty is supposed to be hopefully this panacea that cures all ills, and I don't understand how um, the trickle down effect is going to work. Um, but 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 uh, you know, and again, people say that I, I I mustn't be a pessimist. I'm not being a pessimist at all. The 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 game is now. It's not going to be built around the SA20. It it is 
built around the SA20. You know, South Africa forfeited an international ODI series against Australia in order to have the best players. And it looks like that gamble might just pay off, um, which is which is a huge, huge relief. I, I know that Temba Bavuma and all the other national players were horrified when uh, CSA had said that they were going to forfeit that series. But do you have a... So, uh, anyway, the game is built now around the SA20, and, and that's the way it is. And you said that, you know, guys like... Um, Prenel and Sabrayan, um, and and lots of others who are involved are experiencing an atmosphere that they've never experienced before, um, which is absolutely fantastic. I am concerned that there are plenty of players who are feeling absolutely excluded. Good cricketers who didn't get picked up, and we've forgotten about them. They are feeling forgotten. There are a lot of cricketers um, who I, I think could have made an impact and, and maybe they, they still will but right now they need the game to put an arm around their shoulders and tell them that they are still important that then there is still a role for them or maybe there isn't um, but okay so so we build the game around the SA20 how is it going to help first class cricket for example and how many years will it take well it, it's impossible for it not to because you know I, I use Subrian as an example but uh, you know, I, I ran into Sibs Makanya, Junior Dalla, um, uh, Bosch, a, a couple of these guys. And the thing is, you, you take that energy that you've lived in this bubble for a month and it's going to be around for 10 years at the very least. And the beauty of it is that for the first five years, it's only six teams, so it's limited. So there's an aspirational value that you build up to every single season. I have to be a part of this. I have to be a part of this. So your window as a young player is, is, is to prove yourself. You maybe have to restructure the, the the calendar to build up towards the SA20. Um, but w once you've got wind of it, I mean, if you're sitting on the sidelines and, and you are whoever you are, whether you're in the squad and not playing or not even in any squad, you look at this thing and you say, it's taken South Africa by storm. Crowds are back in the stands. There's all sorts of sponsors. There's, there's, there's all sorts of eyes on it internationally. It's a platform to then propel yourself to go into other domestic leagues around the world. But fundamentally, it makes you a better cricketer for being part of the experience, whether you eventually get on the field for an opportunity or not. And, and, and the other thing is that because of the ruthless nature of these owners and these coaches, if you have a dud season and you've been bought for a couple of million, there's every chance that next season the millions will instead go to a player who was bought for nothing and has blown the competition away because it, you've got to keep on creating that demand and expectation and, and you want to win. You know, every single one of these owners want, want to win, not just for the prize money, but for the, for the bragging rights and the prestige and to have the best squad. You know, we looked on paper and we said, my Cape Town looked like a strong team. We, we looked around at the, and said Pretoria Capitals look like a strong team. They're strong teams. But until you get on the field and there's chemistry, and I'm sure there's coaches who are looking around. I saw Lance Klusner and he was gutted, visibly gutted. Like I've not seen him that irritated in a long time. He looked around and said, yeah, this is a great product, but we've played guck and it's not good enough and we need to fix it. And this is a, you know, a man about to go on a break and his priority is how do we turn this around because it's just not good enough. So it's it's very quickly mattered to not just players, it's mattered to, to, to coaches and stakeholders because there's, there's a pride. There's a pride. Whenever you turn up for a cricket match, there's pride, whether there's 10 people watching or 10,000 people watching. But now when it's so public and it's 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 it's, 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 it's so in your face, if your team is not good enough, you, you're going to, you know, reju rejuvenate that squad quickly and find the personnel that you need. And like we said at the start, these owners throw money at that problem. So if there's a weak team, that means there's an opportunity for somebody to come in and change that team. And regardless of cost, you're going to get your opportunity to turn the fortunes around of Durban next season and make them the team to chase. And that's, that's a great place to be for players because there will be options to go and, and make a difference. OK, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk uh, about some of the individual performances in the SA20. You're listening to Cricket's Conversation on 99.94. Whatever your team, we have the show for you on podcast, YouTube, or on the 99.94 app. We have India, 
England, South Africa, West Indies, and now Sri Lanka covered. If you want to find us, the best way is to follow us on social media at 9994DM by downloading the 9994 app or Google 99.94 on podcast. We speak cricket. Right, the SA20 is uh, coming towards its conclusion of its inaugural season. Um, which players have caught your eye? There's a young, a young, young chap scored a brilliant hundred. You just mentioned him. Um, why isn't he playing South Africa? Africa. France, France, yes, that's it. Uh, yeah, Francois yeah. Duplessis. Du Where's he from? <laughs> um, I, 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 I want to say Chennai or, or Bangalore. Um, I can't, yeah, I can't put my finger, but he played brilliantly. I mean, he might be one for the future. Um, <laughs> okay, there, it, there has, there was talk, wasn't there? I mean, about him. Um, so I think Rob Walter, you know, all the way from New Zealand, probably, you know, 11 hour time difference. Uh, somebody somehow extrapolated um, uh, a version of him saying that he would talk to to Fuff about a return to national colours. I actually um, did speak to Fuff about that and he he, I, he he just didn't want to commit and he didn't want to say no because he he doesn't want, he, Fuff 2 per se doesn't want to say, to be heard to say no to South Africa. But he's, he's you know, he's pragmatic. I mean, he, he knows that He's 38 years old, and and don't ever tell him that he's not fit enough to play for South Africa, or that he's too old because he gets really, really prickly if you if you do that. But he knows that um, that South Africa needs to be looking <laughs> to add the next generation. But um, I think he he would definitely, you know, if Rob Walter said, do you know what, as a short term measure, for just just for this series or or just for whatever. If Rob Walter said, "I need you to bridge a little gap," would you be prepared to do it? I think I think he would. Um, well, I, but you, but you, you probably spoke to him as well after his hundred, did you? I've not seen him that happy after a knock, after the game. I mean, so there's no shortage of motivation. There's, there's certainly no shortage of quality still because he took he took that Durban attack apart, and you know, Rhys Topley came to the press conference afterwards and he said. Players like that, if you don't get them early, you get the sense that you can't bowl to them because he just got better and better and the ball disappeared further and further. And, yeah, he, he, he's still good enough. That that So that's not the issue. It's it's like you say, whether planning for the future is going to be derailed by playing a a, a, a player who, who said that his priority maybe is probably to play in World Cups if possible um, because... The, he, he's done. He's ticked all the boxes that he can in in, in the longer formats of the game, um, but he's still. I mean, he, he's still one of the most coveted IPL players uh, for a reason. And and if if you watch that hundred and you you forget the personal circumstances, you just watch the way that he compiled that innings and he just went through the gears. Uh, I mean, they scored nothing for the first three four overs, him and Reza Hendricks. And then there was a button that he pressed, and it didn't matter whether it was. Holder, whether it was Carl Myers, whether it was Topley, whether it was Harmer, they all came in. Hardest for Leon, they came in and they disappeared. They weren't just just hopping over the fence. I mean, he hit them rows and rows deep and it looked comfortable. So it's not as if any of the hand-eye coordination has disappeared as sometimes happened in your latter 30s. The guy's playing some of his best cricket. So if you're saying you're picking your best players purely on your best players, he's got to be in the conversation. And if he still wants it, and they feel that in that team, there's there's some value to be added. Then jeepers, you know, they, they, you can do a lot worse than pick a duplicy in that form with that much motivation, because he's a positive force in the dressing room as well. Because he understands what it means to play international cricket because of the places that he can take you, and he had to wait a lot longer than others. So you know, there's there'll be a lot of players in that squad who probably have a similar mindset to what he had around 2010, 2011, looking at options of going abroad and, 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 and trying your luck as a, a New Zealander or an Englishman or an Irishman. And, he, he, you know, what better testament than, than a guy who went and captain South Africa for, for 10 years and is still respected in the IPL to say it's worth the wait, play for your country. 
there's more time than you need. I'm 38 years old and I'm still playing and I'm still going to play for another couple of years at the very least, at the very top. Don't don't leave. You know, the game needs you now. You've got opportunities like the SA20, which then propel you to play for SA, which then propel you to play for IPL. It means more to play for your country. I, I don't think uh, uh, a coach or a, an administrator can say it with more sincerity than Faf, who's lived it. He had the option and he stayed and he'll tell you that it was worth it. So you, you, sometimes you do need, you know, these young players who've got options more than ever need to hear it from somebody who's actually done it, not some hypothetical, you know, whimsical marketing talk saying, oh, you know, patriotism. He's, he's done it. He had the option and he's done it. And, and he's reaping the rewards still. We need to fit another little break in, but I want to carry on on the subject of Faf Duplessis and South African cricket in just a moment. If you love the language of cricket and want more, then head over to the 99.94 app and you can hear all of our podcasts and cricket commentary. We're adding new shows all the time and covering cricket series from all over the world. Be the first to hear all of our announcements by following us on social media at 99.94 DM. Welcome to Cricket's Conversation. So when I spoke to Faf and I said that uh, Rob Walter had indicated that he would have a conversation with him, uh, Faf's response was, I look forward to having that conversation, but not about me. Um, I'd like to talk about South African cricket because, you know, I want to see the Proteas back to their best. I want to see them being competitive at the very, very top end of the international game once again. And and it was, and it, you know, he it wasn't, Political correctness that, that he was he was um, fuffs way beyond that that kind of stuff as we as we saw in his book um, yeah he's not going to be bothered about saying be seen to be saying the right thing um, and he that's exactly what he was talking about you know getting South African cricket back to the very top and and I have to uh, ask you again on a very practical level it's okay fuffs made very good money. He's at a decade in the IPL and, um, you know, he's got a designer house in Cape Town. And and and, and so the 23, 24, 25 year olds, maybe even the 28 year olds who, who haven't made a lot of money and haven't got an IPL contract, they're now beginning to look at, at other options and they're seeing the RAND continuing to depreciate. And I, I don't think that it's, possible to stop or 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 even at the moment i can't see a way to stem the flow of of south african players seeking their fortunes or even not a fortune but a living elsewhere um offshore zams and um you know i just think that at the moment that's something that we just have to accept perhaps forever yeah i, I think that's a reality that we've accepted Quite a while ago, we, we we produce more cricketers than most on a, on a yearly basis, and, and some are going to fall by the wayside. Some some are more impatient than others, and 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 and, and some know that they have no interest in wearing a South African Test cap. Um, but every year, there are those who still maintain they do. You know, it still matters to play for your country, so you, you can't discount that. Um, but and a fuff is 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 a bridge. You know, towards that, like like I said, there's there's always this paranoia that you know older players coming back are sort of going to muddle the system because they're going to be taking up a space. I don't necessarily think you know that that answer that he gave you is is one that says I don't need to play again for South Africa, but I want to help South African cricket because it's helped me, and that's that's an important thing. You you don't you don't turn away intellect like that. You don't turn away energy like that. Um, because it, it's valuable, you know, it's, it's really, really valuable. It's, it's somebody who's pro South Africa hugely and he doesn't, he doesn't need another cap. He doesn't, he doesn't, but, but he, he does want to see the best South Africa turn up for the next decade or so as, you know, to carry on the legacy that he was a part of. Um, and, and that's, that's important. And, and, and then there's a few of them in that press box in that commentary box. There's, there's half a dozen former players who played in his vintage, whether it's Vernon, or Chris Morris, or A.B. de Villiers, uh, they've all, you know, 
they've got considerable fruits for their labor in, in, in a South African jersey and then by consequence in the IPL and whatnot. They do not need the money. That's not saying in a disrespectful way. They do not need the money. But they want to see South African cricket flourish. This tournament will help, but the, the biggest way it can help is keeping young South Africans here and giving them a reason to, to stay South African and chasing the South African jersey because then it makes you stronger, it makes the tournament stronger, and, and it makes them compete. The one thing that Faf and AB and all these guys didn't get is an ICC trophy. So we, as a South African fan, now that they're not players, they still want to see that happen, uh, even more so because you know they've paved the way, they've, they've, they've definitely felt the pain. They'd love to see South Africa shine at an international stage. It, it still means just as much. I was going to say we're not usually very good at uh, at harnessing that intellectual that uh, intellectual property for former cricketers, um, but actually, uh, you, the, you know, there's Sean Pollock as well in the commentary box, Vernon Philander. Uh, so there is a lot of international uh, in intellectual property in the commentary box. But one thing the SA Twenty has done actually is change um, the narrative of of how we use former players because you have got Dale Stain. Uh, Jacques Callis, J.P. Dumini, who's head coach of the Palm Royals. Um, and at, at domestically, um, in domestic competitions, we've been really poor at using former players. I think largely because we can't afford to pay them very much. But the, but the SA20 has changed that, and that is a force for good. Yeah, hugely. Mornay Morkels working with mm. with uh, Kluzna in, in Durban. I'll be Morkels in Joburg. Yeah, it, it rejuvenates the game and it, 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 it takes, you know, all this experience and all these assets that have been spread around the world, it brings them back home again and it, it, it sort of plants the seed again, even if it's six weeks, as the SA20 will be. That's that's plenty time because that's you living in a suitcase with this guy, seeing him at breakfast every single day, learning again and again and again and again. And it's not money out of CSA's pockets, but it's to their benefit because... The young players now know that I will start each year working with Kallis or Klusner or Stain or Morkel or Peterson or Dumini. You're working with your heroes. That's that's an important, that's such an important game changer um, because you've got access to them again. And, and, and you didn't in domestic cricket, unfortunately, because you say the money's just not there. But now it is. And a final point. Um because, uh, yep, time's up on this episode. Just a, just a final thought. Um, as you know, a couple of days ago, I was in Bloemfontein, and I mentioned a few minutes ago about players being excluded, good players feeling excluded um, because of the SA20. And, you know, there were limited places in each squad for local players. Some very good players have been left out. They've been kicking their heels for a month. They're feeling very unloved and unwanted. There's a whole union feeling that way. Um, the Free State Cricket Union. And I know that it's early days. We haven't even finished the first season of the SA20. But I put it to the Free State Cricket Union president that um, hopefully if the tournament does continue to be a success, that it could expand um, and include um, the Free State. And um, and he, he, he just looked and said, well, it has to. He didn't need to say, we'll die. Um, you know, cricket will die here. He just said, it, it, it has to. We have to be included. Of, of course. It's a, it's a significant stronghold in terms of the development of the game. When you look at the schools around that area and you look what they've produced over the years, it has to. Um, unfortunately for him, it's going to take another four or so seasons before it's even a consideration because of the agreement in place is to keep this as it is for, I think, at least three, if not five years. Um, so it will eventually, um, and, and, and you hope that just as they've done in, in this recent series with England, the, the, the international games are pushed to those places that haven't felt SA20 love yet to at least keep that audience connected, you know, attached to the game. Because if you're missing SA20 altogether and you're not getting international cricket, the game can die in those places. So it, it's great that that series was played in Bloom and Kimberley. And, and, and you'd like to think test matches will go that way because, as we've seen from the crowds, there is a desire, there is a thirst for the game there too. And as it grows, I'm sure that would be the first priority. 
the, 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 the sort of free state region. Um, but it's a good problem to start looking to because obviously they've looked at it and had FOMO. Um, I'm sure they have, I'm sure Poch has. That's good, you know, that tells you that the thing is working. You've got to create a desire and, and a sense of missing out because that means that it's, it's aspirational. So it, it's doing its job. And at the first season, like you say, it's not done. There's, there's a women's tournament to add onto this next year, which is phenomenal. But I'm sure we'll talk about that in the next episode because there's a women's IPL that's starting and it's going to change a lot of lives too. Absolutely. That's exactly what we'll do on the next episode. So in the meantime, thank you very much indeed for listening this time to South Africa on 99.94. Don't forget you can uh, download uh, the app and follow us on Twitter at Neil Manthorpe and at WAMZAM17. Uh, do please rate, review and subscribe, uh, but only if it's a good review. If you haven't enjoyed it, don't don't review us at all. Okay. Cheers, Sam. Chat soon. Cheers, manners.